Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. We're going to start out by uh, purchasing some upgrades using the BP we earned in the last chapter. I've briefly kind of mentioned the categories we can look at before. And we're basically going to go through each of them here, except for the body. I don't really want to waste uh, the, I think it was 10,000, yeah, the 10,000, just to get this, you know, cooler looking armor. Uh, I think it actually lets you carry double grenades, but uh, that's not really that useful. It's you know, The BP is kind of better spent elsewhere. So we're going to start with our main weapon here. You can see, obviously, we only have the high-frequency blade. However, we can go into the enhancements menu and give it some upgrades here. Strength, obviously self-explanatory. Absorption, uh, it'll kind of increase the amount of fuel cell energy you get back from striking enemies. And energy, which uh, basically just lowers the fuel consumption in blade mode. So we're going to buy each of these. They're fairly cheap at this point in the game. So we can afford basically everything we need here. We can also check out our unique weapons. If you remember, we unlocked the pole arm last time. So we can go ahead and unlock that with 10,000 BP and also enhance its strength with another 6,000. Then as we go back out, we can also purchase a life upgrade, which we're of course going to do. And also a fuel cell upgrade. And when it comes to skills, there's only really one I want to buy at this point. Uh, these skills are kind of fun to play around with, but functionally they don't really give you a whole lot of advantage in combat. So uh, we're going to go with the aerial parry though. Obviously, anything defensive is probably a good choice. So uh, now we've got 37,000 left over, and that's basically all we're going to spend at this point. So let's get started with the next file. So you've got some kind of disguise lined up, right? Yep, all set. Hope so. You'd be a little conspicuous just walking the streets. Relax, Kev. I'll blend right in. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just get into the sewer system ASAP. Hopefully anyone who notices you will just mind their own business. You sure you want the K-9000 there along for this one? I had the good doctor make some adjustments along with the repairs. Remote piloting and AI wiping have been disabled. So yeah, I say let's throw him a bow. Wordplay. My exoskeleton resembles a canine. Canines enjoy bones. Amusing on two levels. Let's go. It's Raiden. I'm in the sewer system. All right, let's get started. Your mission's to investigate the Desperado Affiliated Research Center somewhere in that area. According to the intel from our client, the lab's been dumping illegal waste into those sewers. FYI. They're also involved with the cartels in human trafficking. Allegedly, anyway. <laughs> this just gets better and better. Tell me about it. We need you to infiltrate the lab and find out everything you can. Of course, you'll have to find it first. We still don't know the exact location. So I'm looking for anywhere the lab might hook up with the sewers? Yep. If they're actually dumping waste, they've got to link up somehow. Find that connection. Sneak into the lab and see if you can find evidence implicating them on anything. No problem. Stealth's my specialty. Right. Well, we'll see. Do we have any idea what kind of research they're doing there? Not really. Maybe something related to all the people they're trafficking. Like experimentation? It's possible. First things first, though. Find a way into that lab. Oh, right. It says here, the locals say 
black crocodiles live in those sewers, so you know, uh, watch out. <laughs> black crocodiles? Could they be talking about UGs? Maybe just an urban legend. But still, be careful. I will scout ahead. You will provide backup. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Commence operation. Right. Unidentified UGs are patrolling the sewers. Exercise caution. Come on, Blade Wolf. I'm trying to talk here. <laughs> so yes, we are now in the sewers under uh, what is actually Guadalajara, I believe. Searching for a Desperado lab that's uh, kind of hidden down here. Seem to be dumping waste into the sewers and... Obviously, we've got a bone to pick with them anyway, so it seems like as good of an excuse as any to, you know, check them out. And also, you notice we've got Blade Wolf along for the ride on this one. Looks like, uh, Doctor actually managed to make some repairs on him, even though we cut him up into, like, 25 different pieces. But, uh, either way, he's helping us out now, so, you know, for better or for worse, he's along for the ride. Now we have a new enemy here. This thing is called a Mastiff, and it's actually is somewhat annoying, actually. I don't really like it to fight these things too much. I like to just stay close range. If you can get a counter off, you can get some good damage there on those big punches. Now, whenever he does this, just do a dodge to get out of the way. That nah, didn't get a counter that time. That's fine, though. Getting good damage in. Oh, there we go. And we managed to stun him. So that went super quick. Uh, they can either be really easy or they can be really annoying. Uh, if you get, it's kind of like the geckos in that if you get more than one of them in a the pack, uh, you could be in for a little bit of a fight, but one-on-one, -on -one, it's maybe not so bad. Alright, so good way to start things out there. Almost a, like, complete and total S rank. Just missed one on the BP scale for whatever reason. I see a maintenance catwalk. Use it to conceal yourself if necessary. Okay, so obviously we're in the sewers. This is kind of a video game trope by this point. And uh, we're going to do a little stealth action against these guys here, do some aerial takedowns. Uh, as far as this file is concerned, this may actually be my least favorite file of the game. It's a little bit generic, and of course, you know, like I said, going through sewers, I mean, how original. Uh, you know, there's some interesting things here and there along the way, but uh, this is, there's also not really a whole lot of, like, super action-packed stuff here, so... Uh, if you're finding this one maybe a little bit slow or not enjoying it so much... The ride I know then uh, don't worry because I'm kind of in the same boat a little bit here. So after we've taken those two guys out, we can head back into this uh, doorway through here. And as we uh, take a look around the corner, there's our next VR mission. Okay, and we can continue on out. Nothing else really too much of interest in here. Uh, there's a lot of these kind of longer pathways extending. Uh, obviously, this is the way we need to go. There's kind of a hole we have to fall in. But uh, there's a lot of these kinds of pathways. A lot of times there are items at the end of them. Uh, sometimes like this, though, it's just a dead end with nothing interesting to see. So we can cut through the fence. Oops, kind of got hit on the head by the fence there a little bit. Right, there is a boy in these sewers. Okay, so Wolf remarks there's a boy in the sewers. We can also see, uh, if we look at AR, there's actually quite a lot of tripods hanging around here. So this is where I'm actually going to showcase the uh, custom weapon we picked up. The pole arm that we've unlocked and upgraded a little bit, we can go ahead and equip it. And now uh, we have still have our sword with square, but the pole arm now takes the triangle slot. So uh, as you may be able to kind of tell by that slight demonstration, the pole arm's real specialty uh, is actually area of effect stuff, crowd control, that kind of thing. When you're surrounded, using the pole arm is a great idea. So as you can see, I'm basically just getting the attention of all these guys. Uh, some of them land on me, which is fine. And now we can check these, check this out. Yeah, the pole arm makes pretty quick work of them, I gotta say. So, I uh, got just a couple stragglers left to finish off. And there we go. So this is, I, I think I mentioned... Oh, wow. Oh, that was a no damage. I guess I thought those scores were bad. Why don't I get an SBF? Yeah, no damage. Makes sense. Uh, I think I mentioned before there's a weapon that would be able to deal with uh, the tripods better in the last file. This is it. The pole arm is super good for whenever you're surrounded. It's an amazing, uh, like, secondary weapon for that. It's probably my, my, uh, my favorite of all the custom weapons we're going to be getting. We can also head back through here, and you can see another enemy has popped up. And, um, 
Uh, okay, it's a couple of tripods forming a person. They did better at it here than they did in MGS4, that's for sure. So we can fight this thing, and uh, it's actually not that straightforward of a fight, because you don't really have any indicators for when it's going to attack. So you kind of just have to keep on the move. And of course, if you just watch it closely, you might be able to figure it out. There we go. And then once we can kind of break them apart here and then take out their separate parts. You want to take these things out because you get a lot of BP. 5,000 there, 5,000 there. And we also got, I think it was 629 just as kind of a general bonus. So that's a huge boost in BP. You definitely want to take out those, uh, I call them humanoid geckos. I think I read that somewhere and it sounded fitting to me. So uh, you definitely want to take those out when you can find them. Now we have to uh, cut our way through here. And there's yet another hole to fall down. We'll get to that kid in a bit. Let's talk about these enemies here. Uh, these are raptors, and we're gonna start us out by fighting three of them, which is a bit of a pain, actually. Uh, these guys are uh, pretty aggressive for the most part. Also, you want to avoid that purple field because that's kind of like an EMP field, and uh, well, yeah, so they'll just, they'll like to come up behind you and uh, kind of off camera and attack you whenever you're, you can't see them. So yeah, you don't want to get hit by the purple field that they spit out. If you can get a counter once you've damaged their legs, you can take them out uh, pretty easily because they won't be able to jump back afterwards. There we go, then we can just do the finishing blow here. Ah, did I ruin it? I think I did. Yep, I did. Oh well. Too bad. However, uh, once you finish off one of these things, they kind of get turned red with rage here, and it's actually uh, pretty helpful because, uh, well, they do quite a lot of damage now, which is not helpful. But if you, if you can kind of just outlast them here, eventually you can see they'll just get stunned. And uh, it's not letting you... I'm not sure what the problem is here. Uh, usually, there it goes. It lets you do the finishing blow. Maybe I didn't get enough damage, and I'm not sure. Oh, don't tell me... Okay, I was going to say, don't tell me I lost another Zendatsu. Uh, this is already going to be a pretty bad battle ratings-wise, uh, because obviously I've lost a Zendatsu, and... Uh, the combo probably isn't the best, and it's probably taken a little bit too long, but that's fine. Alright, so when it's one-on-one, -on -one, they're not so bad, because you can really just focus on this one guy's attacks. And you can always get a, you know, decent parry off. Okay, so there we go. Got him damaged to the legs there. That was a little early. Right, we can just kind of go to town here and then run away. Uh, if he, I think I mentioned that, but if you get hit by that field, you'll get stunned. So you don't want that to happen. That'll pretty much give them a free shot. Alright, and we Zandatsu, the last one. That wasn't the cleanest that's ever gone for me, but uh, I'll admit that's actually kind of a tricky battle. It's a little mean starting you out with three of those things on your first encounter with them. Alright, so yeah, this is waiting on the rating screen. Uh, hey, okay, well, I thought it would be worse than that, but, you know, I guess we made up for it with a couple other things. Estas bien? What you say? Oh. Me a Guyanese, from Guyana. You speak English? Uh, yeah, I'm from America. Call me Ryden. My name George, like Georgetown. George. And just like all damn America president. Yeah. So what are you doing here? Me? What the rest of you do here? You lose the map of Ninja Hideout, Ninja Man? <laughs> no. I'm looking for bad guys. Our damn Skunter Research Lab. You know about it? Me know me now go back. Hey, you're not one of them Skunt, nah? No, I guess you're all right. If you're a cyborg, 
You know who Day is? Sort of. What happened to you? Oh, maybe live on the street, rake and scraper above, nah? Then this good need dressed like the mafia say, Hey, boy, you want a job? What the worst gonna happen, nah? But that mother scone don't put me on a rass boat. They pack us all a big old dirty container. Next thing we know, we're here at the Jumbie Lab. All kids like you? Yeah, a lot of boy. But then me been over here, what them scone wanna do? Snuff us out and got all day organ. So you ran? Uh huh. You shame me not a bad ass robot ninja man, same as you! Ha! <laughs> me been strongest cyborg ever. Warlock all them phantoms and black clothes that I pass me. Starting to sound like a bad guy yourself. Just plain, nah? Me done plenty bad thing. But me not kill no man. Nah, never. Good. We tried to warn the boy. I say, are you this brain would get cut out? Run your ass out of there! But them boy with me no understand. They like Spanish or something. So me the only one for escape. Then that machine come after me and... And I know the rest. George, <laughs> I need every detail about how you escaped. Oh. So the kid got into the sewers through a drainage channel? Yeah, he says the channel is super tight, but there's some kind of shutter next to it. Got it. That must be where they dumped the waste. There's something else. It sounds like a Desperado exec was on site yesterday. If a sentry cyborg was on hand for the meeting... You should be able to review their video log, provided you can find a server access terminal. That would give us the evidence we need, as well as a little peek at the level of that technology. So what about the kid? I made sure the area was secure and told him to sit tight. Can you pick him up? Sure. I'll send a couple agents for him. You just focus on getting into that lab. If what he said is true about the organs, we need to hurry. Agreed. Riding out. Okay, so that was George. Uh, I don't know. Is he still around? I don't think so. He probably disappears once the cutscene's over. Um, his voice kind of gets on my nerves a little bit. I don't know, um, it's, <laughs> it just kind of bugs me. Uh, we do kind of get introduced to a little bit of the main overarching story here, uh, with what he told us. They kidnapped a bunch of boys and seemed to be harvesting their organs. You know, that's a just pleasant thing to talk about here on whatever afternoon you happen to be watching this. But, uh, he kind of gave us a little introduction to what's going on. Heavy UG activity ahead. It is possible they are conducting test operations while the lab is closed. They're not going to make it easy to get into that lab. Is there some way you can sneak past? Yep. And, uh, forgot what I was saying, actually. They just cut me off and now I don't really even know. I was talking about the main plot, I guess. Uh, they were harvesting kids' organs and, uh, gave us a little bit of directions, I guess. Kind of, uh, you know, off-screen. And uh, now we're going to have to go search for the lab. Obviously, VR mission over here. This one's pretty easy to find. Uh, most of the VR missions are kind of just out in the open here. So uh, you shouldn't have too much trouble searching for them. You can also see we've got something to pick up here. Obviously, Metal Gear veterans and really anybody who's heard of the game probably know this. It's... It's a box. How is that going to help? Oh, it's for medical supplies. That could work, actually. Yes, it's a box. We all know what we're going to do with that, so let's check out our sub-weapons. And... There we go. <laughs> we can wear the box. Also, if you take a peek in there, you can see Raiden kind of hiding in there. So, yep. And also, it's kind of unlimited boxes, because it just kind of disappears. You can just do this over and over, which is a little strange, but we'll go with it. So, obviously, we can use the box in order to avoid detection from enemies. And uh, this is going to help us out as far as stealth is concerned uh, quite a bit. So, let's go ahead and open this up. This guy's going to turn around, and we can use the box to hide from him here. Okay, well, he's going to jump across first, but we can just wait for him to come back. Uh, as far as the box is concerned, it doesn't work exactly like it does in the older games. Uh, a lot of the time, if enemies saw a box in those games, they would come over, check it out, and, like, lift up the box, and, you know, you'd be seen. Uh, however, enemies just completely ignore the box in this game. Uh, the only way you'll ever be discovered if you're hiding in a box is if an enemy literally walks into it. So, uh, apart from that, you're pretty much good. Alright, so this guy's turning around, we can take him out. Now, we're gonna want to be careful not to kind of take out the catwalks here, so if we just do a sort of a horizontal slice, 
Uh, because it turns out if we actually slice like this floor that we're on, uh, it will actually just disappear beneath us. We can also get an aerial takedown on this guy. Alright, and get as far as we can before this guy turns around. And eventually he's gonna jump back over to this little platform right in front of me here. There we go. We can use this opportunity to jump up the boxes and take him down. Most impressive. We intercepted call for backup during your last fight. The caller's position is on your soliton radar. You can engage if you wish. It is your choice. Okay, so now that we've taken out those three guys, obviously call for backup, so. He says it's our choice, but do we really have one? We gotta do it. Uh, it's also pretty important not to cut this catwalk so we can jump over here. Uh, there is another way to get up, but you kind of have to like walk back. Uh, you can see you'd have to go back up these stairs and then back around. So, you know, if we wanted to be a little quicker, we can just do it this way. And uh, this blade mode box at the end of these pipes, we can open it up and get our next data storage. There's also an item over here. I don't think it's anything important. Yeah, just some BP, but you know, 500, so it's worth it. Okay, so now we can kind of backtrack here and go to our optional battle. Which, uh, this one is also pretty tricky. They actually step up the combat quite a bit in this file. So let's see what we've got. So right off the bat here, you kind of have to parry this thing. Because see, the counterattack didn't really do a lot. And I got hit by the first one. Uh, what I'm actually going to do here is take off the polearm. I usually only like to equip the polearm, like, when I need it. Uh, otherwise, it's better to just be able to access the sword combos. Uh, so what this guy has, you can see, is this flamethrower. There's nothing you can do against the flamethrower. Uh, if you get hit by it, you just get hit. Obviously, there's no parrying it or anything. So what I like to do is just stay in ninja run mode and kind of uh, go around him and hit him with the sword. Now, I usually kind of lure him to do his... A spinning leg attack like that and uh, if you okay well the camera was spinning so I couldn't select my parry direction that was nice and uh, a lot of the time if you just kind of mash the parry button you can get a counter attack off and that will allow you to take him out pretty much instantaneously I almost got hit by the fire there okay yeah got hit <laughs> so that's gonna kind of steadily do damage for it to us for a little bit there we go finally got enough in on him that one uh, was not the cleanest of these guys I've ever had. These guys are actually called Votum Jerka, so obviously I just call them jerks for short. Alright, and that one's down. Now we're gonna have some more. They keep on coming. So we just do the same kind of strategy with this one. Again, if you just kind of keep moving, he usually can't hit you with that flamethrower. Uh, I'm trying to get him to do that spinning attack. There we go. Okay, no luck that time, but again, like I said, you can sometimes get lucky and do a counter-attack. And otherwise, we can just keep doing damage here. Oh, <laughs> one of the tripods ran into me. Alright, that one went a little bit better. Right now, a handful of tripods, so let's just get out the pole arm. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> I did not even see that guy coming over there. Okay, well, <laughs> again, this is uh, kind of a problem with the camera sometimes. Enemies can just charge at you from afar. All right, so now this one's going to be a little bit tricky because we've got a couple to deal with. And it's also going to uh, kind of limit the places we can run to as well. Okay, that guy charged me, though. He just kind of homed in. Wasn't a lot I could do. Also, we've got tripods. Yeah, as I said, this is a pretty tricky battle. It's going okay, though. I mean, I'm not really in too much danger. Uh, thankfully, they don't do too much damage, uh, especially compared to some of the other things like the Mastiffs in this level. There we go. Got a good counter off. If you can manage to get a counter attack on that thing, uh, you can instantly take it down. I'm also getting breathed fire at me here, so thankfully invulnerable during that animation. I uh, didn't really have anywhere to run there. I kind of got stuck. All right, so I think once we take this guy down, this should do it. Perfect. Good 
driving. Very good. And yep. Oh, again with an A. All right, that's actually not bad. I was expecting a B on that one. So um, the first one didn't go so well, but hopefully you can kind of see what I was trying to do with the later ones where we never really got like too much down below 100%. So uh, that one again can be tricky, but really if you can handle that battle, you can basically take anything this level's gonna throw at you. All right, so there's actually a couple ways we can go forward, but they both just kind of lead to the same place. Uh, one we can go kind of up through there. There's also a repair nano paste up there if you're interested in grabbing it. Uh, otherwise, we can just come down through here. Right, I have determined the approximate location of the lab based on the voice information. It is marked on your Soliton radar. Okay, so we got to find the lab entrance, but before we do that, we want to come in here. Uh, it's a couple goodies inside, nothing too big, actually just one goodie. However, you can see this box looks a little bit out of place, so uh, let's see what's up with it. Yep, we now have our second man in a box, so again, we'll let him live. Uh, we're gonna have these uh, jerks kind of circling around here, uh, which they can be kind of tricky to take out with stealth sometimes, because they're pretty fast. However, you can just walk up behind them and do that. And then as soon as you take one out, there we go, try to get in the box. As you can see, another one just kind of randomly spawns. Uh, you really have no way of knowing where it's going to spawn or which direction it's going to be facing. So it could turn out that as soon as you take one out, uh, the next one will just pop up right behind you and, you know, get right on your case. Let's go ahead and do this one. So you can see that one spawned right in front of me, but thankfully it was going the other way. Uh, I think they all go counterclockwise around this room here, so uh, that could be a little helpful, I guess. Also, there was a repair nano paste above me. You might have seen it. Yes, <laughs> and uh, Kevin kind of adopting Boris's accent there. Okay, so once we take all of them out, we're free to search for the lab entrance. You don't have to take them all out. You could just find it immediately. You could probably already tell this wall looks a little suspect. It's also uh, kind of shimmering every now and then. We can also look at it in AR and you can see this is definitely what we're looking for. So we can cut this up. So, a fake wall projection. Pretty well hidden, I gotta say. And this will be the entrance to the lab. So we can go ahead and take out these cameras along the way. And uh, so we'll just make our way in here. Alright, so again, nothing too interesting here, just some cameras. And we can open up the door to the next area. 